Did you guys hear about the new law in New Jersey? The most stringent gun law in America. Here's the actual bill right here. It's a 31 page bill. I don't, I don't know if people read these bills. I mean, the, a 31 page bill is relatively short compared to what some of these gun control slash people control pieces of legislation. This is a little video I put together. It's just like a 50 second video, but uh, this shows you how out to lunch, not just, it's not the Justin Trudeau's, the Justin Fidel Castro Trudeau's of this world that I'm concerned about. It's not the Adolf Hitler's, the Joseph Stalin's, the Mussolini's, the Mao Zedong's, the Pol Pot's. It's the people who follow them and applaud the chains of their own oppression as they're disarming you for your own safety. They're going to make sure they have the guns. Oh, don't worry about that. But they're going to disarm you for your safety. And they'll use it under the cover of law. This is uh, the it's going to be deprivation of rights under color of law. And they're going to use force to enact these laws. Count on it. Watch. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. A national like that's euphemistic terminology. Just come out with it. We're depriving you of your right to keep and bear arms. And I understand this is Canada and they don't have the second amendment, but guys, the second amendment doesn't apply to you because guys 240 years ago in America on American soil decided, Hey, you're going to have rights. It's just recognizing rights that you already have. Cause you're a human being, not because you're an American, but you have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to keep and possess a weapon for whatever reason you want. As long as you're not harming, threatening to harm or using it to steal somebody's property. And it's not because you're American that you have a second amendment right to keep and bear arms. It's because you're a human being. And I like what this meme says right here. No matter how you feel about guns, you should educate yourself with the historical truths of disarmed populations. Just ask yourself what happens to disarmed populations? Well, guess what? History doesn't really turn out well for them. They're usually under tons and tons of dirt. They usually get demoralized, dehumanized, and they usually get deprived of their life after they're deprived of their property. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns. Unless you're an elitist. You can buy, sell, possess, and transport handguns or any kind of gun that you want if you're in the upper echelon, if you're in the haves, if you're in the have not pile, well, we can't have you have them. Don't you think that Trudeau is surrounded 24 hours a day, seven days a week by an armed security detail? You bet he is. So this doesn't apply to him. This does apply to you. Now they're going to say, well, this is to help curb crime, to get criminals off the street, to disarm criminals. So we, of course, have to broad brush this whole thing and criminalize all you people who aren't harming, threatening to harm or steal anybody's property. We're going to just have to relieve you from them too. Obviously as a natural course of law, we're going to keep our guns. You can't have them. And if we catch you with them, guess what? Our laws, which are backed by the threat of force and violence, our law uh, enforcers and our agents will come to your house with guns that they can have, but you can't have them so that we can extract you from your homes, throw you into a rape cage because you have an inanimate object. We told you, you couldn't have, if we catch you with them. Well, then you're a criminal in the eyes of the state. And look at this. If anybody should be fighting against this, it would definitely be native Americans. I'm all for total gun control and trusting the government to protect you. After all, it worked out great for us. Never mind the slaughter. Never mind wounded knee. Never mind all that stuff that happened in the past, all that genocide stuff. Just forget about it. Let's just move on. Justin Trudeau's our man. Obviously, if he wants to take guns from us, it's for a good reason. Anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. Who the in f May, our government introduced measures to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. Today, our national freeze on handguns is coming into force. Our national freeze on handguns is coming into force. A government that doesn't trust you with a firearm is a government that can't be trusted. History records that the primary characteristic of tyrannical governments is to disarm and threaten the people with laws backed by force. And that's what they use. Force, violence, brutality. They got a monopoly on it. So when you get to this New Jersey thing, New Jersey poised to enact nation's strongest gun law. 
It's not a gun law. It's a people law. It's not gun control. It's people control. This is tyrannical actions by tyrants in your face in broad daylight. After Supreme Court ruling, the bill would, among other things, require people wanting guns in public to purchase liability insurance. Oh, you want a gun? Then you have to purchase insurance, which knocks a whole lot of poor people out of the running. So they're, they're putting this barrier of this requirement. Let's see, barrier. What's another word for barrier or hindrance? Uh, what is it? Uh, God, it seems to me it's found in one of the 27 words of the Second Amendment. What is it? Oh, that's right. Infringement. They put this infringement in between a free people and the government. Government can't ha- can have guns. You can't unless you meet the requirements of the government, which those requirements, those restrictions, those regulations, those background checks, those forced insurances, those are hindrances or infringements. New Jersey's top lawmakers who hate your ever living guts. Let's just read these articles like they should be read in truth. Because truth fears no scrutiny, baby. Unveiled sweeping gun legislation. Don't you love it? Gun gun safety regulations. That's still gun control, which is still people control. It's gun legislation. That's still gun control. It's still controlling people. It's like it's like the war on drugs was not a war on plants. Plants didn't they didn't incarcerate and and handcuff and kidnap plants and cage plants. They handcuffed, kidnapped, and caged people. It's not gun control. It's people control. It's not, it's not uh, gun violence legislation. It's people control legislation. It's not a war on drugs. It's a war on people. And that's what this is. This is a war on people. Oh, you, how dare you think you could defend yourself with a gun says Justin Trudeau says the legislators and lawmakers and New Jersey. How dare you think you could, you are, were free enough to do something and buy an inanimate object without our permission. Who do you think you are peasant? That's how we should read this. New Jersey's top lawmakers unveiled sweeping gun legislation on Thursday that would significantly restrict or infringe upon when and where guns can be carried outside the home, a bill they touted as, quote, the nation's strongest measure concerning concealed carry. There's a word for that. It begins with T, tyranny. The words, the world's strongest, most concentrated pocket of tyranny. Call it what it is. Call it out. Wipe away all the euphemisms. Stop the nonsense. Pick up that big shovel of steaming pile of legislated BS and throw it overboard. The bill would, among other things, require people wanting to carry guns. Now, why would Mary Jones down the hall in 207, why would she want a handgun in a city like Chirac run by Beetlejuice Lightfoot? Why would she want? Oh, that's right, because she's got three kids and when her husband's off at work, she needs to be able to protect them because the crime in her neighborhood, well, it's pretty high, Lightfoot. Pretty high. So we're, what we're going to, with the Beetlejuice Lightfoots of this world and the, the, the Cuomos of this world and all the, the, the psychopathic lawmakers of this world want to do is put a barrier between Mary and getting a personal protection device that could literally save her life. So what are they saying about Mary's life? Your, your life ain't worth nothing to me. We could care less what happens to you in, in apartment 207 in Chirac. We don't give a damn. We're going to make it so hard for you. And now when, if you lived in room 207 in New Jersey now, if this thing goes through, now you're going to have to have carry liability insurance. How about that? She can barely pay the rent. She can barely feed her kids. She can barely make it through life. You think she's going to be able to shell out money for liability insurance so she can have a personal protection device? This forces people to go to the black market. It's like, I got to live. So I got to do things I normally wouldn't do. And by the way, when you're using the black market, you're not committing criminal activity. You're just trying to engage in the free market and get away from government. Government doesn't want that though. They'll pursue you to the ends of the earth. They don't want you to be free. They don't want you to be protected. They don't want you to have money in the bank. They don't want you to have a savings account. They don't want you to have food. They don't care about you. Get it through your thick skull. The bill would, among other things, require people wanting to carry guns in public to purchase liability insurance. What the frick? The first statewide mandate of its kind in the nation should the bill become law. 
and banning guns from being carried in 25 broad categories. Let's just broad brush these things. It's the government laying a dragnet. Maybe we'll get somebody. Maybe we'll be able to criminalize somebody. Maybe we'll be able to penalize and cite and fine and kidnap and cage somebody so that we can feed the prison industrial complex with a whole lot more poor people. Included but not limited to, limited to government buildings, healthcare facilities. This is where you can't carry a gun. Airports, casinos. And look at this. And private properties where the owners have not given express permission to have guns. Private properties where the owners have not given express permission to have guns. So if it doesn't say that you have you can have a gun on that private property and they catch you with it, boom, you're a criminal. There's got to be a sign that explicitly says you can have guns on my private property. If that sign's not there, it's, we're not talking about a sign that says guns are prohibited. We're just talking about a, 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 a private business or establishment that doesn't say guns are not prohibited. <laughs> That's going to be every place because what private business has a sign that says, hey, all guns are welcome. They're probably discouraged from saying that. They would they would probably get penalized for that. So if it doesn't have a sign saying you can have one, then the government automatically says you can't have it there. And if we catch you with it there, you're gonna get kidnapped. You're gonna get cited. You're gonna get fined. You're gonna get thrown into a rape cage. This is so egregious, man. This, this makes you wanna blow your top and go, where the frick are we? Land of the free, home of the, what a joke. What a joke. Violations would be deemed a third degree crime. If you look up third degree crime, you know what's also counted as a third degree crime? Assault. You entering, you conceal carrying a personal protection device for you, uh, your family, anybody in your zone of influence who might need some firepower and need some help. In case some hoodlum walks in, how many videos have we seen in the last two or three years and it's getting worse and worse where people are just sitting there or standing in line in a convenience store. Somebody walks in and just starts mowing everybody down. Don't tell me that doesn't happen in New Jersey. But wait, if you're standing in a convenience store in New Jersey and you happen to be uh, in there when somebody does, some real criminal comes in there with intent to hurt people and you blow them away and you save everybody, I would not doubt that the legislators and law enforcement agents of that state would find you with a third degree crime because you have a gun in a private establishment that didn't say you could have one. <laughs> wow. Third degree crime is on the same plane as assault. So if you walk into a private business and they didn't explicitly say you could have a firearm, which means you, you transgress this law. If this ends up going into law, you're on the same plane as somebody who committed aggravated physical assault. My personal belief is that our way of life is being threatened essentially by certain things that have gone on in the federal government says state Senate uh, president, Nick, whatever his name is said during a state house press conference announcing the proposal. We need to address that with this particular piece of legislation that we're going to drop today. He says, my personal belief is that our way of life is being threatened as they threaten the way of life of anybody who wants to carry a firearm and criminals are going to laugh at this. They're going to be like, I am so happy about this legislation because this knocks a whole bunch of other law abiders who are just going to do the right thing and disarm themselves for their safety, of course. And now guess who gets to be in power? Only law enforcement agents and all the criminals who don't give a damn about these lawmaker laws rubbing their hands together going, Oh my gosh, my work environment got a whole lot safer. Governor Phil Murphy has vowed to sign the measure. I guess, I guess people just deserve what they ask for, huh? I don't, I hate to say that. I hate to be so cynical, which comes in response to the U S Supreme court's ruling earlier this year, which effectively broadened the scope of who can carry guns in public. So they know it's against the second amendment. They know it violates just in your face, the constitution. And they're going, we don't give a damn what the Supreme court says here, here in New Jersey, we're going to have the strictest gun laws 
in violation of the U.S. Supreme Court and the Constitution of the United States, specifically the Second Amendment. That, we feel real good about that. And that's called securing liberty for the American people. The proposal outlined on Thursday broadly mirrors what Murphy, a progressive Democrat, has previously proposed in response to the Supreme Court's decision. Quote, the governor's goal was ensuring that residents of and visitors to our state could be confident in their safety in sensitive locations such as daycares, hospitals, stadiums, and public transit systems, which we know when criminals enter these magical areas, they will automatically disarm because that's just what criminals do. They're just nice guys like that. I mean, criminals are kind of law by... Uh, law abider. Oh, wait a second. That's right. Criminals don't abide by laws. Huh? What are we talking about? Well, who cares? We know that you think these lawmakers are that stupid that they don't know that they're empowering criminals. Cause that's what they're basically making all of New Jersey, a gun free criminal empowerment, victim creation, fish in a barrel zone. <laughs> what the frick? What the frick? Why are you living in New Jersey? I'm from Jersey. You from Jersey? Uh, I was. I disown it now. How could I live in the land of tyranny? What's the, what is the population of New Jersey? How can people stand for this? Population of New Jersey, 8.885 million. Almost 9 million people in New Jersey. A, a, when I was growing up, I thought, man, people from Jersey, they talk like that. They're, they must be tough. Those tough Joyzeans. Jo what, what do you call them? Jersey? I, I don't even know what you call yourselves. But I guess you would call yourself slaves now. I mean, because that's what happens to slaves. They get disarmed by their masters, right? 8.885 million people is the population of New Jersey. You're really not going to stand up for yourselves? You're really going to let Phil Murphy and the, the corrupt lawmakers do this to you? Dehumanize and demoralize you? disarm you, disempower you. The administration has worked closely with the legislature to draft legislation over the past few months. And the governor looks forward to signing this bill into law after it moves through the legislature process. Assembly member Joe Danielson, D. Summers from Somerset, Democrat from Somerset, will be the prime sponsor in the assembly. This guy will be the prime sponsor in the Senate. I'm a gun owner. I enjoy my guns, guns often, but I enjoy the right to have those guns and use them responsibly. This bill provides zero conflict. What the, in other words, I need this bill to keep even me in line. I'm a gun owner, but we need this right here. Cause this bill right here, this bill represents zero conflicts with the constitution of the United States. And this guy's, that's how far gone in there they are. It is no measure of good mental health to be considered well-adjusted to this kind of profoundly sick society. And if this ain't profoundly sick, then there's no such thing as profound sickness. The proposal comes as new gun laws. New York uh, recently enacted in response to the Supreme Court's ruling are facing ongoing litigation. The federal judge recently invalidated key parts of New York's law, but a federal appeals court on Wednesday allowed it to remain in place for the time being. We're doing this because we know that gun safety does not conflict with safe gun ownership. While I respect the institution of the United States Supreme Court, <laughs> candidly on this one, they got it wrong. The introduction of more guns into public spheres makes us all less safe. And what happens when they make a law like, oh, I don't know, say prohibition? Does it actually reduce the sale, purchase, and transportation of alcohol. Do not people rather go, you know what? It's worth the risk. Let's create speakeasies. Okay, what's our knock going to be? What's the password? The knock's going to knock three times on the ceiling if you want beer. Yeah, it creates a demand. You tell somebody they can't. Look, you can see it in your kids. Have you ever raised kids? You can see it in your kids. You tell them they can't do something, and oh, man, they really want to do it now. And they'll find, they'll come up with cunning, crafty, deceptive ways to make sure they get what you said they couldn't have. It increases, what did prohibition do? It gave massive rise to crime. Murder rates went sky high. Theft, arson, all that stuff went up. And it immediately dropped like a rock 13 years later when they said, well, that probably wasn't a good idea. 
Or actually, was it a good idea? They knew what was going to happen. You know what happens when you enact prohibition? Crime goes through the roof. Criminals have their way. Cops get in on the action. Holy moly. I'm not going to read this whole article. Here's here's the actual bill right here. If you want to read it, it's a 31-page report. It does say that, you know, it does talk about background checks. It talks that about that broad spectrum of the 25 uh, ways or places that you can't carry a firearm. The most egregious to me is you can't enter a private business unless they specifically say you can enter their business with a gun. If they don't specifically say, you're automatically deemed a criminal and a third degree felon. You've committed a third degree crime. So go ahead and be a law abider if you want to, you 8.8 .8 million people in, uh, in uh, New Jersey. See how that works out for you. Wait till you see what happens to crime when they pass this bill, if they pass this bill. This bill passes. Wow, just, just stay on top of it. Keep watching New Jersey. See what's going to happen there. Subscribe for more tyranny-busting content.